Welcome back to another video of Your Daily Scales. Now, basically, this is a series where I teach how to play uh, basically all of the scales on the piano, all the major scales, for a beginning piano student. And so, basically, that's what this series is. And it's also a bit of a companion series because I'm going to be teaching some really simple classical music in the future as well. And if that classical piece happens to be in one of these major keys, I'll say to come back if you don't already know how to play this major key and you don't already know the scale very well, to come back and watch one of these videos and practice on the major scale that is in that key and so that's kind of what these videos are used for and basically in every video I teach you a different scale so let's take a look at what today's scale is so the scale we're going to be looking at here today is G major. Now G major is kind of interesting for a couple of reasons. And first of all, the one reason that's kind of interesting is it's the first key that we're going to be working on that has any kind of a sharp or a flat. And as you can see, it has one sharp and that sharp is F sharp. Another thing that's kind of interesting is one of the first pieces I'm going to be teaching on my channel is actually a very famous and also a very simple Bach piece, which is a minuet in the key of G. So that's also going to be kind of cool. If you practice on your G major scale, you will become, it will make learning that piece a lot easier because you won't have to think as hard about the fact that you will have to play an F sharp all the time in that piece. Now playing the G major scale is quite simple and the fingering that's used for the G major scale is actually the same that was used for the C major scale which I've already talked about on my channel. If you're just getting um, started in learning how to play scales and learning how to play the piano, you should probably go back and check out the C major scale first before moving on to anything else if you haven't done that already. And the fingering, like I said, works exactly the same as C major except you're playing a different scale with a different set of notes. So we start here on G and we go up to B with our first three fingers, one on G, two on A, three on B. And then once we get to B, we want to tuck our thumb under our middle finger to play C with our thumb. And then from C to G is really, really simple. We just play all of our fingers in that order, one through five, as you can see there. So we've got two on D, three on E, four on F sharp, and then five on G. And once we get to G, we head right back down to C, which is just straightforward, as I just said. So once we get back down here to C, we want to cross our middle finger over our thumb to get onto B. And then if you remember at the beginning of the scale, we played one, two, three, getting up to B. So when we're on B going back down, we play three on B, two on A, and then one on G to get back home. Now the left hand is also quite simple. Starting on G and heading up to D, it's really, really simple. We just start on five and we do all of our fingers in that order right up to D. Really, really simple. So five, four, three, two, one. Then we're on D. And once we're on D, we're going to want to cross our middle finger over to E, which will set us up for heading back up to G. So we've got two on F sharp and then one on G. Once we're on G, we then head back down. We do two on uh, F sharp, three on E, and then we tuck our thumb under to get to D. And from D, we head back home straight to G. So let me show you how G major works on the keyboard. So what I'm going to first do is, going to, is I'm going to play each hand separately and pretty slowly, and then I'm going to bring out the metronome and play both hands together five times through so you guys can get an idea of how you should practice scales. And also, if you have a piano or a keyboard or really any keyboard instrument, um, you can play along with this at home if you want to, and you're first learning the G major scale. That's a great way to practice it. And also, even when you become more familiar with the scale, it's a good idea to practice with the metronome or at least at a comfortable speed. You shouldn't try to play them as fast as you possibly can and mess up constantly, it's a good idea to practice at a reasonable speed. So here's how the right hand of the G major scale works. We put our thumb on G and we play the first three notes like this. Then we tuck our thumb under our middle finger to get to C. And then from here to the high G is really easy. We just go right up the scale. And remember to play F sharp and then back down to C, play F sharp again. We cross our middle finger over to get to B, and then we're back home. Now, one thing you have to always remember is, well, there's two things. Always remember to play the F sharp, and then you always have, also have to remember in the right hand that your thumb is going to be always landing on the C. When you get back to the start, it's going to be landing on the G as well, but your thumb is always going to be landing on the C, which is the only note in the middle of the scale between the two Gs that it always lands on. It's not going to land on this D. It's not going to land on any other note. It's always going to land on the C. So it's a good idea to always make sure when you're practicing both the right hand and the left hand to make sure that your hand is always playing your th that your thumb is always playing the right notes that it's supposed to because other you can technically play it like this for example if you play a four there and then cross your thumb under here but if you were to move on to another octave it could mess it up actually in that case it worked all right but it's always a good idea to put your thumb on the right note as according to the sheet music because that's just the, tr the traditional way of playing the scale and it works best So that's what the, the scale would sound like at a higher speed. So let me show you how the left hand works as well. 
Now the first five notes are super easy. We start on G down here, and then we go up to D, just right, just like that. It's that simple. And then once we get to D, we cross our middle finger over to get to E. Then we play F sharp, and then that's the top of the scale at G, and then we head back down to E. We tuck our thumb under to get to D, and then we head home to G. Now in the left hand, your thumb is always playing on D, and that is always where it's going to land. You go from 5 to 1, and that's always where it lands in the left hand. And then once you get to the top of the scale, it also lands on the G, but like I said, in the middle of the scale, between the two Gs, it always lands on this D. So that's another important thing to take a look at. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring out the metronome. This is my metronome. Any metronome will work as long as it works and it makes some sound. And I'm going to set it to a speed of 76. If 76 is too slow for you uh, or too fast for you at home, you might want to set it to maybe 66 or something like that or a speed that's reasonable for you that you can you know, understand the scale. And in fact, when you're first practicing the scale, you probably wouldn't want to use the metronome. You'd want to just slowly figure it out until you kind of know how the scale goes. And then once you can play it through pretty slowly without the metronome, then you'd want to bring the metronome in and play it at a very consistent and even speed. So I'm going to set it at 76. And like I said, once again, if 76 is too fast for you, you can uh, slow it down. But once you get comfortable at whatever speed that you like playing it at, then you can start bumping the metronome speed up a little bit faster. So you might play the scale through once, and then increase the metronome, and then play it through again, and then increase the metronome again until you feel that you're, you're playing it too fast. And then from there, you'd want to slow it down a bit and practice it at that speed for a while. So let me get it back on 76. Let me turn the metronome on, and I'm going to play the scale for you through five times. Second time. So that's how practicing on the G major scale with the metronome would work. Now one thing I actually kind of forgot to mention is something that you might be wondering if you're just starting out with piano is what exactly is a sharp? And so basically what that means is the a sharp note is one that is a half step above the normal note. So normally F is here, but F sharp is going to be here because it's exactly one note above F. So that's how F sharp works. If I I forgot to mention that earlier in the video, and I probably should have mentioned it like right at the beginning. But that's how F sharp works. If you didn't know that already, basically a sharp is exactly one note above the note that normally it is. So like F sharp is here instead of being here because this is F and this is F sharp. This is G and this is G sharp and stuff like that. So that's how sharp work. And flats work the opposite way. For example, this note is normally E, so E flat is going to be the one directly below it, which is this. Just thought I'd, I'd talk about that. But now let's move on to another way you can practice the G major scale, which is in contrary motion. So let me show you how that works. So now let me show you what the contrary motion of the G major scale works. We've already looked at the parallel motion of it, where both hands move in the same direction. But contrary motion is where the hands move in opposite directions. And the right hand of the contrary motion is exactly identical to the right hand of the parallel motion. As you can see here, it has the same exact shape as parallel motion does. But what you can also see is that the left hand is going in the opposite direction, and that is where your fingering is going to be somewhat changed. It's going to have a lot of a different feel, but actually your, um, your thumb is always going to be landing on D as before. So that is something that you want um, to, ch to check out. You always want to make sure that your thumb is landing on the proper note in both the right hand and the left hand. And with contrary motion, you're actually going to be playing the same fingers on the, on, the, on the different notes at the same time. So your thumb is always going to be on G in the right hand, and then your second finger is always going to be on the second note here in the scale. In the right hand, that is A, and in the left hand, that is F sharp. So in the left hand, since the right hand is the same, I'm going to skip it. We've already talked about that. But the left hand, we go three on E and then we have one on D, and that would mean we'd cross our thumb under to get to D, and then from D back down to G is really, really simple. Just everything straightforward from D to G. 
Heading back up from G to D is the exact same way except backwards. We do 5 on G, 4 on A, 3 on B, 2 on C, and then 1 on D. And then once we're on D, we want to cross our middle finger over to E, and then we've got 3 on E, 2 on F sharp, and then 1 on G. So that's how the contrary motion works. So let's listen to how it sounds on the piano. So let's take a look at how contrary motion on the keyboard works. Basically, like I said, you actually start on the same exact note with both hands, which actually feels really weird, but that is what the sheet music is saying. Now you could play it with the hands an octave apart like so, where your, your hands start here and then head in opposite directions, but since the sheet music is saying to start on the same note, that's what I'm going to do here. So basically for contrary motion, I'm going to do, the right hand is exactly the same as we already talked about, so I'm not even going to talk about it here. I'm going to just play the left hand through. So we start on our thumb, which is one, and then we go down from here instead of up like last time. So we head down to F sharp with our second finger, then we play three, then we tuck our thumb under to do D, and then from here we just head right down to G, and then back up to D, and then we cross our middle finger over to get to E, then we do F sharp, and then we're back home. So at an even speed, this is what that sounds like. So now let's hear contrary motion five times through with the metronome at 76. Second time. So as you can hear, contrary motion has a much different sound than the parallel motion, which is what we just talked about, where the hands move together in the same direction. Contrary motion is where the hands move in opposite directions, and as you can hear, it has a much different sound, and it also has a much different feel as well. It has, you kind of have to be a bit more coordinated to play in contrary motion, but at the same time with some of these particular scales, you're actually playing the same finger at the same time. You're both playing the thumb, you're playing the second finger at the same time, third, you cross with your thumb at the same time, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of interesting that you're actually playing the same finger at the same time in each hand. So that's one thing that makes the contrary motion a little bit easier. Another thing I wanted to discuss on the topic of G minor is its relative minor, which is E minor. Now, what's kind of interesting is this book that I'm going off of, it doesn't combine the major and relative minor scales together. It does have some pages about minor scales, but it doesn't include the natural minor. For some reason, I find that kind of odd, so I'm going to be talking about it in the videos on the major scale. Now, basically, the minor, there's two ways to think about how to get the minor scale out of the major scale. You can take the major scale, which I'm going to play here a little bit, and then you, st you start the scale on the sixth note and then play the same order of notes, and that is the minor scale. So if we take G and then we head up six notes above it, one, two, three, four, five, six, E is the sixth note in the major scale. So if we take E and we start on E and we play the same notes that are in the G major scale, we end up with E minor. I'm going to play an octave lower here so you can see all the notes I'm going to be playing. So if we start on E and then from E, we have an F sharp and then everything is going to be in the key of G. So we start here on E. That's the minor scale and that's how it works. You basically start on the sixth note of the major scale and then you play the same notes that are in the major scale and that's how you get the minor scale. It has a much different sound and a much different feel even though it's the same notes, so that's kind of interesting. And another way you can think about getting them to the minor scale is you take the, the key which you're in, so if we we're in G major, you'd want to take a G, and then you'd want to go three half steps down from G, and then you would also end up on E, as you can see. So we go one half step down, 
two half steps down, three half steps down, and we'd end up on E as well. And from there, you could play the same order of notes that are in G major. So that's also another way that you can actually get to the uh, E minor scale from G major. Just wanted to explain that. Hopefully you found this video on the daily scales to be uh, informative and helpful for you, whether you're a beginning piano student or someone who knows a little bit about how to play music and they want to become better at what they do. Scales are really helpful for all of that. It doesn't really matter what type of music you want to play or what you know what you want to do with your musical skills whether you just want to learn more classical pieces and play them or compose brand new music of your own or improvise and do play solos playing scales and knowing music theory like that really helps you do all of that and so if you're watching these videos and learning and practicing on your scales every day it's a really great help so hopefully you found this video uh, informative and helpful like I said if you want you can go check out the rest of the video series and also if you want to subscribe and hit that button up there on the right hand side of the screen make sure to do that because I'm going to have lots of cool uh, videos of really simple classical music from some of these awesome books here from the 1800s. So if that sounds cool and you want to learn how to play some really fun, simple Bach pieces, make sure to stay tuned. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.